So the first the clowning of the media that we're going to see in this case, it, it won't be soon because California cases move slowly, but it's going to be in the wake of the anti slap motions. And the reason why I say that um, both both Evan and Ilma have filed anti slap motions against uh, against Marilyn Manson. But they are necess they're, they're by necessity limited to just things having to do with speech, um, just dealing with his allegations about the conspiring with uh, other women to make the false accusations, making the Phoenix Act, uh, the, the Phoenix Rising documentary, uh, even the fake FBI letter, Evan Rachel Wood is trying to claim, well, I thought it was authentic. And so for <laughs> me to use that and file that in my court process is completely legitimate protected activity. But the problem is anti-slap is not going to get them out of the swatting, the planting, you know, illicit pornography and, and all these other examples of, of the extreme and outrageous conduct. So it's not, even if, even if their motions are, are completely granted, which I don't have an opinion on at this point, I just haven't had the time to, to be able to sit and, and go through those in, in great detail. Uh, but even, even hypothetically, if they won everything that they're asking for, it's still not going to get rid of his lawsuit. There's going to be claims that he makes that, that survive that. There's just no basis in the First Amendment to, to be able to challenge that activity, that conduct. Um, and so the media is going to spin that. I, I mean, it's just inevitable. We're, we're going to see that, oh, it's a, it's a travesty that they're being punished for, for speaking out. Just right. once again, the complete refusal to engage with the actual facts, the actual allegations and evidence, uh, because they're so determined to force it into a predetermined narrative. Um, and then when that narrative turns out to not be correct, the explanation is, well, we must blame everybody. We must blame the Marilyn Manson supporters. We must blame the court. We must blame the legal system that's that's failing them. Instead of, like you said, looking in the goddamn mirror, <laughs> taking some right. accountability for their own role in creating these problems. Right. And I've even seen, uh, you know, going back to the debt thing for a second, I've even seen Judge Penny Asperati getting some grief from some journalists for uh, allowing this to be streamed as if she was some kind of publicity happy, uh, you know, she was publicity happy and she she just wanted, you know, she wanted all the spotlight to be on her in her courtroom. I really don't think that's what she was. And thank thank God that we did have this trial, that this Johnny Depp trial was streamed because otherwise we would be getting so much misinformation from the gatekeepers, from the mainstream media. But the yeah. fact that it's something that everybody could see for themselves and come to a conclusion about, it's really, you know, it just shows that, that as flawed as our legal system is in a lot of ways, that the courts are still really kind of the last bastion of hope for people who have not gotten a fair hearing in the media. Um, yeah, and, and I think that it also goes to show how, you know, the folks who are, or who are jumping on Judge As Karate over this, again, they're so interested in justifying their position that they're not interested in invest, investigating the basis of, of, of their objection. I mean, right. there's a statute in Virginia that makes it very clear what the terms and conditions of media access are. Judge as karate is a judge. She doesn't make the law. The legislature makes the law. They made the law that provides access to the media, to the courtrooms under, under specific terms. Her job is simply to carry that out. Um, but you know, you, you can't expect apparently a, a media organization to do basic research and investigation in, into what they're claiming before they go ahead and claim it. It's just, it's just been ongoing. Something I'd like to ask is Johnny Depp is, is clearly on a victory tour right now. So what, if any, role do you see him playing in Marilyn Manson also being able to start in pursuing this, this type of public vindication? Maybe as Johnny Depp's reputation uh, is rehabilitated and as he finds success in Hollywood again and he's, he's accepted back into Hollywood, um, maybe he can do more. But I would imagine we don't probably see much comment from him uh in the near future what do you what do you think i, I think what you're saying makes uh makes perfect sense um i want to see it personally i, okay. I 
<laughs> I have from from the beginning um, looked at this story of, of Johnny Depp in, in, through the framework of the hero's journey. And I think an important part of that framework is the transformation that the hero goes through by enduring, you know, these these difficulties. Um, it, it's a supernatural process, a spiritual process. And so coming out of it, um, it is somebody who is really a, uh, a, a, a person with, with moral authority, a person who has um, had to be tested in, in these just extremely, extremely difficult and transformative ways. Trial by fire. Yeah, trial by yes. fire. Yeah. And has come out of that uh, on top. So I want to see, I want to see that transformation and that, that spiritual growth. I, I want to see that, that Johnny has grown from this. And I, I think one of the ways he can do that is by taking a stand for, for his friend. Um, of course, for me, I've been doing an entire video series on Isaac Baruch. Isaac Baruch is by far one of the highlights of this trial for me. And, right. and part of that is because of the central role that that friendship, the, that male friendship uh, really played in that Isaac was just the best friend that Johnny could have hoped for. And so I want to see Johnny learn from that and be that friend to Marilyn Manson. I would love to see that too. And I really, I think what you're saying there about the hero's journey is really powerful and, and really beautiful. And look, I do think, I, I do think, you know, and you and I, in, in our lives, we've been through our own stuff and, and, and everything. And I do think that when you come through, when you come, when you have trials by fire in life, when you come through some difficult stuff, I, I do think that it really helps to steal you, steal you um, against S-T-E-E-L steal you against the criticism of others, you know, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune and things like that. And, and I think that it can, it, it does really provide courage. You know, I have people sometimes will say to me, you know, how can you be so courageous about speaking out, you know, on your YouTube channel um, and taking the risk that you do. And one thing that I always bring up is, you know, that when I was in my twenties, I lost uh, someone who was very dear to me to cancer and, and the going through the process of watching that person die um, there was something as tragic as it was, there was something almost kind of freeing about that because once you face, and we talked about this before you and I have, but once you face your mortality and the fact that you're going to die, it really is freeing in a way. What do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. And so what I would say, yeah, what I would add to what you said, you know, to Johnny is, um, uh, maybe now that he has been, is going to be accepted back into Hollywood and he's going to have his, his power back, so to speak, his influence. Um, it would be nice if, if having come through all this, that maybe it gave him a little bit more perspective and maybe, you know, for lack of a better word, gave him some, some guts to go out there and, and, and say some unpopular things and stand up for someone who, unfortunately for Marilyn Manson at this point, he's still so radioactive, radioactive. He really can't stand up for himself. But we will see. And um, if Johnny would like to come on uh, our show. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right. Oh, just go. <laughs> well, uh, Andrea, thanks for being here. And as always, it was a wonderful conversation. And uh, ask everybody to uh, subscribe to our channels and uh, check out Andrea's series on Isaac uh, Baruch. It is really interesting. And what what a witness he was. I hope that, uh, I hope that Johnny Depp has... Uh, has thanked him profusely <laughs> for what he did for him in court. <laughs> but thank you so much, Andrea, and uh, to everybody. Yes, subscribe to our channels, and we will be back later. <laughs>